Welcome back children. This is the second video for standard 6 biology. Now we will start up with pollination. What is that pollination? It is the transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower to the stigma of the same or different flower. So when the anther of the male flower moves on to the stigma that is called pollination. And this pollination, it is of two types, self and cross. What is the meaning of that? If the pollen grains from one flower moves to the stigma of another flower of the same plant, that is self-pollination. If pollen grain of flower of one plant moves to the stigma of the flower of another plant, that is called cross-pollination. Now, for this cross-pollination to occur, some agents are required. That is the next topic, that is agents of pollination. Which are the agents? See here, wind, water, animals, birds and insects. And what they do? They help in the transferring of pollen grains. First one, pollination by insects. For pollination by insects, what is the requirement? The flower has to be brightly colored so that they will attract the insects. What else they have? They are big in size and they are highly scented. By this, the insects will be attracted and when they come and sit on the flower to suck the nectar, they will carry the pollen grains and take it to the female flower. Coming to the next agent that is wind. By the help of the blowing wind, the pollen grains can be transferred to the stigma. Coming to third pollination by water that occurs in aquatic plants where example is given in your book you see children, hydrilla. So in that plant the pollen grains are spread by the help of water. Pollination by birds and animals. When the birds and animals, when the birds eat the fruits, they take the I mean, they, uh, for these birds from the flower, they take the nectar and while sucking the nectar, they help in the transfer of pollen grains. Huh. And what happens? But this pollen grains, they are taken to another flower and they are dropped there so that pollination can take place. Now, the next topic is fertilization. So what happens is after the pollen grains are transferred from the male part of the flower to the female flower in this part in fertilization the details which are given you you don't have to read only you will read the definition so after pollination what happens fertilization what is that fertilization the fusion of the male gamete with the female gamete to form a single cell is called zygote and after the formation of zygote, what happens? This develops into a new plant and inside the stigma style and ovary that I have discussed children already in the structure of flower. Here I told you inside the ovary there are ovules. Inside this there are the ovules. I have shown you in that diagram in my previous video. Now these ovules what they do they develop into the seeds inside the fruit you are eating seeds those seeds are the ovules and the ovary is actually the fruit that you eat so this is all about fertilization after fertilization what happens as i told you the ovary develops into the fruit so what is the fruit children fruit is the ripened ovary and inside the fruit seeds are present now what is the structure of a typical fruit a typical fruit consists of pericarp pericarp means see this diagram children this fruit wall is called pericarp the pericarp is divided into three layers exocarp which is the outermost layer mesocarp it is the fleshy part of the fruit and endocarp it is the inner layer of the fruit all right and this inner layer it encloses the seed so pericarp is the free fruit wall having the three layers inside which the seed is present now this diagram of the fruit is very very important in the exercise part this is given you will draw there what is the function of the fruit? It protects the seed. You can see in the diagram. It helps in the dispersal of seeds so that when the animals will eat the fruit, then they will throw the seeds and that is seed 
dispersal and the seed has cotyledons which store the food so when you open if you take a seed and you break open you will find two halves or single half those are called cotyledons they store the food for the growing embryo coming to the next seed so seed what is that seed these are the fertilized and mature ovules sometimes the fruits may have a single seed or they have many seeds what is that seed see this is the diagram of a seed the seed is protected by a seed coat you can see here this is the seed coat protects the seed and this is the main part of the seed which is called cotyledon this stores the food for this part this is called the embryo or the baby plant the baby plant has got a radical it has got a plumule radical is that part which leads to the formation of the root of the plant and plumule is the part which leads to the formation of shoot of the plant okay now let's move forward the next part is seed dispersal means once the seed are formed what are the different ways they are scattered the process in which seeds are scattered far away from the parent plant that is called dispersal of seeds now for this like in pollination agents are required for dispersal also agents are required which are they dispersal by wind children i have marked in the book the examples you have to read some fruits are very light they are hairy or they have wing like structure so that they can fly in the wind some are dispersed by water these fruits they when they float in water they are transferred from one place to another by animals the seeds they have hook like structures they will stick to the body of the animals and they can be taken far off birds eat the fruits and where they fly away they drop the seeds dispersal by explosion sometimes what happen the seeds are covered with leathery covering and thus and then when this covering they it will burst just like this one pod it will burst and the seeds will be dispersed so these are the different ways by which dispersal of seed takes place coming to the next part seed germination what is germination the process by which the dormant dormant means when the embryo is inside the seed it is in an inactive state and this dormant seed when it gets the suitable conditions then it begins to grow into a new plant and that process is called germination which are the conditions children moisture oxygen and a suitable temperature when this is provided then this dormant seed it will grow into or it will germinate and what happens during germination during germination the seed will absorb water you might have seen your mother might be germinating the gram seeds at home then what she does she put soaks it in water the water will be absorbed and you will see from the down part one whitish color structure comes out that is called the radical so this is how germination takes place now this germination may be of two types epigeal and hypogeal you will read the definition and example what is epigeal germination the cotyledons are pushed above the ground these cotyledons you can see the seeds are sown inside when it germinates the cotyledon moves outside that is called epigeal germination and what happens in hypogeal germination the cotyledons remain under the ground this is called hypogeal germination epigeal germination it is usually seen in dicot seeds means the seeds which have two cotyledons but hypogeal germination it is usually found in monocot seeds that is the seeds having only single cotyledon now children with this we come to an end of the chapter you can see here some keywords are given please learn the definitions of these keywords these are very very important also there is a mind map here children you can see where classification of the plant is given please read it thoroughly now we should move to the exercise part children you see here the exercise part i have solved for you you can see very clearly and you can mark it in your books and learn from the book itself no need to write in the copy
ट्रू फॉल्स ऑल्सो आई हैव डन इट फॉर यू यू कैन सी दिस वन रेस्पिरेशन इन प्लांट्स अकर्स थ्रू स्टोमैटा इट इज गैसियस एक्सचेंज करेक्शन कैलिक्स कंसिस ऑफ पेटल्स कोरोला क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन अकर्स विद इन द सेम फ्लावर सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन अकर्स विद इन द सेम फ्लावर एंड्रोशियम इज द फीमेल पार्ट एंड्रोशियम इज द मेल पार्ट और यू कैन राइट गाइनोशियम इज द फीमेल पार्ट नाउ दिस नंबर ई इज ट्रू नंबर एफ इन होल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ लीव्स ओनली वन लीव अराइजेज एट अ नोट इन होल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ लीव्स मोर देन टू लीव्स अराइजेज एट अ नोट यू कैन लर्न फ्रॉम द बुक नाउ डिफरेंट शेड बिटवीन चिल्ड्रेन यू विल राइट इट डाउन इन योर कॉपी सी रेटिकुलेट एंड पैरल वेनेशन इट इट इज ऑलरेडी आई हैव टॉट सो फ्रॉम द बुक ओनली यू विल राइट डाउन द डेफिनेशन one i have done it for you in my paper you please see that how i have written in the same way you will write in your copy you can take the screenshot and you can write it down in your copy in this way you will write down the differentiate between now number b is given what is that second one simple and compound leaf you will write down definition and one example terminal bud and axillary bud it is not given in your book so i have written it down please you see this this is the difference between terminal bud and axillary bud you will write it down in your copy as i have written the third one it is cross pollination and self pollination definition you will write down for fifth one nodes and internodes also i have written it down for you children you can see here this also you will write in your copy one more additional i have given that is epigel and hypogel germination this one you will write down the definition and you will give one example coming to difference between you will write in your copy coming to the next part answer the following in brief name the different methods already i have marked only the names you will write like dispersal by wind dispersal by water four methods are there you will write different types of leaf venations the two types you will define explain the parts of a fruit with the help of a diagram see in page number 15 it is there fruit with a diagram this one how much i have marked in the book only that much you will write in the copy and then this three along with this labeled diagram functions of the fruit also you will write coming to the next question what is the next question what are the agents of pollination it is in page number 13 agents are given since it is the brief answer only you will write down the agents define pollination define fertilization what is seed dispersal all these three definitions pages i have marked this is given in the keywords you can write it down then explain the long answer explain modification and leaves given in page 10 those definition those modifications which are given you will write down here this one leaves are modified for support okay how much i have marked you please write down that much in the copy here also all the parts which are marked children only that much you write in the copy pitcher plant and venus fly trap and bladder wort here you can write only the examples these are the examples of plants for trapping insects okay next question what is the next question what are the functions of fruits and flowers these are given in page number 15 and 13 children you please see page number 13 functions of flowers given here and page number 15 functions of fruits are given here okay coming to the next question draw a neat diagram of a flower and label its parts it is given in page 12 you will do that explain the formation of fruits this answer i have written down in brief in the paper please see that you will write down this answer in your copy for question number 6 d clear 6d is this is the answer you please write it down in your copies coming to the next question number e explain the different modes of seed dispersal here page number 16 the different types of dispersal you will write to one to two lines with examples explain the parts of a seed with a neat label diagram given in page 15 figure 1.18 that one you will write down explain briefly the process of seed germination that 